The other plant that uh, I think is a real star is rhodiola. And uh, rhodiola is particularly interesting because it's another one of these uh, interventions, like phosphatidylserine, that shines when people are under stress. It's um, been well studied now. It's uh, thought to have dozens of active constituents. This is a few of the, the flavonoids that are found in uh, rhodiola. It, uh, this is all recent research from this year. Antioxidant effects, uh, anti-inflammatory effects, serotonergic effects. It has effects uh, on MAO, uh, inhibition of MAO, which increases dopamine and norepinephrine. And probably because of that, it has antidepressant effects and it also has neuroprotective effects. This uh, is a really fascinating study that just came out. And uh, it's, a, it's a randomized double-blind study and uh, it was on people who have stress-related fatigue. Patients who are stressed out and worn out, burned out. And in this study, compared to placebo, they showed that repeated administration of rhodiola exerts an anti-fatigue effect that increases mental performance, especially the ability to concentrate, as well as decreased cortisol response to stress in burnout patients with a fatigue syndrome. And so, the thing that makes me really excited about this is that um, most of us are kind of in this boat to some extent just because of the necessities of our lifestyles. And uh, what does that mean for rhodiola as a long-term um, intervention? I think it suggests that maybe pretty well everybody would benefit by being on rhodiola. Um, the rationale is this. Um, we have very few things that really reduce the cortisol response to stress. There's a lot of things that are sort of purported to, but not that many things that are really shown in good uh, solid evidence to reduce the cortisol response to stress. And if you want to know what reflects the aging of your brain more than any other single thing, what do you think it would be? If we were using imaging technology like, uh, like MRI, what do you think would reflect the aging of your brain better than any other single thing? Hmm? It would be the volume of your hippocampus. That single measurement alone reflects your risk of developing dementia in the years to follow, and it shows how far you are away from it. What do you think determines the volume of your hippocampus over time more than any other single thing? If you're a diabetic, what determines your risk of cardiovascular disease and end organ damage more than any other thing? The average level of hmm? glucose, right? We know that. It's the average level of glucose that is most associated with your risk of cardiovascular disease and end organ damage as a diabetic. What do you think is the, the average level of something that determines the aging of your brain, particularly the volume of your hippocampus over time? Cortisol. If we had a better way of measuring it, uh, according to the research data that we have, the single most important thing that will determine how quickly your brain is going to fry with age, particularly your hippocampus, it's the average amount of cortisol that's gonna circulate through your bloodstream in your lifetime. So if there's anything that can reduce the surges of cortisol that occur under stressful circumstances, that's probably a pretty big deal. And this may be one of the most exciting uh, discoveries right here in that uh, rhodiola um, improves uh, memory, concentration and it reduces the uh, cortisol response to stress in people that are particularly uh, experiencing that whole phenomena. There are people who might even be in some stage of adrenal burnout so that those are people that are, uh, they've been through the, the ringer as far as their cortisol levels and now their uh, diurnal rhythms of cortisol are disrupted. But even those adrenal burnout patients, if you look at their average level of cortisol, it's generally quite high. It's just they don't have nice uh, diurnal rhythms uh, with the right peaks and valleys, and they continue to respond to stress with uh, high cortisol.